What's up guys, this is Coach Bobby with Bobby Tingle Basketball and today I'm coming to you from the classroom. Today's topic is going to be geared toward performance training design variables. So many times we have players and even uh, parents and other coaches coming to us to implement, design, and execute programs for our athletes or uh, whether it be an individual small group or entire teams. Uh, so today's variables will consist of a needs analysis, exercise selection, frequency of training, exercise order, We'll have training load, volume, and rest. So these are our variables that we must address when we get a new athlete, small group, or an entire team that we're entrusted to training. So the first uh, variable will be a needs analysis, and that comes in a two-stage process. The first one, uh, the first stage in involves a movement, physiological, and injury analysis. All that is is the movement analysis, understanding the movements that are most common in the sport. So, for example, in basketball, we need to understand what movements our athletes are going to be performing on the court, so we may address those in the weight room. Uh, next is the physiological analysis, and all those are is the four components. Does our athlete need more strength? Do they need more power? Do they need more hypertrophy or endurance? So we'll address those needs based on our athlete. Also, injury analysis, what are our most common muscle and joint injuries and how do we address those with our athletes and in implementing and designing a program that may address and hopefully prevent those type of injuries for our athletes. Our second stage is our athlete assessment. What that is is we're building a profile for our athletes and gaining uh, what, gathering information on what their goals are for our training, but also providing what they need during their training. And that kind of goes back to the first stage. Also, we must understand the training status of our athletes. Are they a novice, are they intermediate, or an advanced athlete? Also, understanding the training background. Some of our athletes come to us with previous injuries or some other uh, types of illnesses that may have just occurred or whatever it may be. So we have many times we may even have to consult a physician before we even start with one of our athletes. And last is the physical evaluation. As far as basketball, we may have a squat test. We may have a vertical jump. We may have an agility assessment. Whatever those are, those assessments will kind of in tune, will drive our programs for our athletes. Second is our exercise selection. So, so once we've gathered all this information on our athletes, now we must decide what exercises to implement within our program. Now there's a couple variables for that as well. One is equipment. Two is time, and also the last, or there's many others, but the other one is the athlete season. Now, when it comes to equipment, a lot of our middle schools may not have the same equipment as our high schools, and some of our high schools may not have the equipment that many of our college universities have. So a lot of that goes into uh, account. We must take that into account of what kind of equipment that we have that we may put into our programs to help serve our athletes. Also, we must understand our power exercises, such as Olympic lifts, plyometrics. Also our core lifts such as deadlift, squat, bench, or any of those variations. Um, also our assistant exercises, mainly your single joint exercises such as maybe as a bicep curl. Uh, but all this is going to be based on the needs of the player. Also coaches, I want to stress to you as far as Olympic lifts, these should never ever be used as a conditioner as the same as plyometrics. The Olympic lifts are a highly technical uh, lift that must, our athletes must be metabolically fresh to perform these. And with plyometrics, before implementing any kind of plyometric with our athletes, landing mechanics should be stressed first. And once again, these should not be performed in a, in a deconditioned state or an untrained athlete. We must stress the landing mechanics there, but please do not use those as conditioners. Third is our training frequency. And now this is kind of the number of training sessions within a given period. Uh, so once again, this is kind of dependent on our athlete or their novice, usually looking at two or three days of, uh, of training, intermediate, three to four days of training. And then our advanced athletes can go four to seven, depending on what their goals are and what their needs are. And also this is depending on what are we off season in our sport. So for basketball, usually spring and summer are off seasons. Uh, depending on your level, uh, you have your preseason and then you have your season. So all those will kind of guide our frequency as far as training. Our fourth variable will be our exercise order. So now we have the sequence of exercises. So there's usually four basic models, but there are more. I'm just going to cover these four. One is more typical 
is your power core and assisted exercises. So your power would go back to maybe if you teach Olympic lifts or if you have plow metrics within your program, those would usually be first in the sequence. Then you would go to your core, such as your deadlift, squat, or bench, or the, any of their variations, and then your assistive work or any kind of core work like that. Uh, the next one would be kind of an upper lower. So, for example, if you're performing some type of upper body exercise, you would follow it with a lower body exercise. Uh, the third type of model would be kind of a push-pull uh, a model. So for example, if I was doing an incline dumbbell press, I would follow that up with probably some type of dumbbell row. Uh, so that would be kind of a push-pull routine. And then some coaches like, for their athletes, supersets and compound sets. Now there's usually some misnomers there, or they kind of used interchangeably, but there is a, distingu a distinguishment between these two. Our supersets usually are two opposing muscle groups. So, for example, if I want to do a bicep curl, I would follow it up with maybe a tricep press down. That would be an example of a superset. For our compound sets, we're, we're working the same muscle group, just two different exercises. For example, if I did a bench press and I would follow it up with a dumbbell fly. So that would kind of be an example of a compound set. So once we've covered our needs analysis, our exercise selection, we know our frequency, and we have our exercise order, we will move to our training load. And what all the training load is, is load is the amount of weight that is assigned to that particular exercise. So if we're squatting that day, if your working weight is 200, that would be considered the load. Um, also, intensity will affect the load. And so our intensities are usually based on these four. Our, if we're trying to gain strength in our athlete or develop strength, that usually consists of 85% or above. If we're developing power within our athletes, say well, we're working on a certain type of an Olympic lift, that kind of falls into kind of two categories. One is between 80 and 90 percent, and the other one is 75 to 85 percent, and I'll just explain those here in a second. Uh, if we're trying to add size to our athletes, we're looking at 65 to 75 percent in that range. Or if our athlete needs some endurance work, usually about 65 percent or less. So that's kind of our training load. Now next is our volume is all that is the total amount of weight lifted in that training session uh, so for example now we have our strength power hypertrophy endurance now we're going to look at our set and rep schemes that are usually pretty consistent now there's ways you can manipulate that but these are just a kind of a general guideline so sets for strength you would work between two and six sets and about six reps uh, if we're developing power for our just our one one movement so going back over here for 80 between 80 to 90 percent we would look at one to two sets between three to five reps there if we're with our power say any kind of our olympic lifts again 75 to 85 percent we're looking at three to five sets and three to five reps uh, once again if we're looking at our hypertrophy between 65 and 75 percent we would look somewhere in between three to six sets and seven to twelve rep or excuse me six to twelve reps uh, going back to our endurance, somewhere between two and three reps and 12 plus, excuse me, two and three sets and 12 plus reps for our endurance. And last is kind of what we kind of get lost in a little bit is the rest and probably the most vital. And that is the recovery between sets, exercises and training sessions. And a lot of those are dependent on the goal of the training, the load or the amount lifted in that training session and our athlete, what's their status again? Are they novice, intermediate, or beginner? And kind of when we're in those training sessions, if we're developing strength, we need adequate rest for the line of the body to recover so we may perform uh, those whatever exercises in your program. So usually typically between two and five minutes of rest. If we're power, like say plow metrics, Olympic lifting, after you know a design, after a set that has been performed, or even maybe a rep depending on the exercise two to five minutes. When we get into hypertrophy, uh, we're looking at 30 seconds to a minute and a half of recovery before our next set. And in endurance, uh, if we're trying to build a, an aerobic base to our athletes, we're looking at possibly 30 seconds or less. So today I just want to cover those seven variables. So as coaches and trainers, we need to take in consideration of these before we even design or implement any kind of program for our athletes and remember, try to stay away from the cookie cutter programs and design something that is specifically designed for our athletes and their needs and their goals. 
So also for my middle school and my high school coaches, if you're not a member of the National Strength and Conditioning Association, I would urge you to try to be a member or at least reach out to some of those coaches within that organization to help uh, with the design and implementation of programs for our athletes. But also there's another organization out there, it's the National Organization of High School Strength and Conditioning uh, Coaches. So it's just a group of coaches at the high school level that have came together to educate and help other high school coaches and youth coaches as well as far as training for a lot of our young players because they look to us for guidance and we need to provide that guidance uh, whether it's in the weight room or on their quarter field of play. So once again, that was our kind of our training variables for today. If you have any questions, reach out to me at bobbytinglebasketball at gmail.com. I would love to explain any, any of these variables in detail to you or any other questions that you may have, okay? Thank you for your time and have a great day.